Hey everybody, Michelle is back. I wanted to give you a part two of what it means when you understand that you've healed. You know, that's a new concept for a lot of people, to be healed. And I'm telling you, it's all worth it, okay? I put out a video earlier that says uh, the potential expectations when you are properly healed. You know, when you are coming to a point of being properly healed, there are going to be some strange events happening in your life. And some of those events will come from people who you thought were supporting you and loving you. It is um, it's a sad reality that a lot of people flourish off of uh, unhealed people. A lot of people make their income off of people that are healing because they know that, you know, they're going to, this can go on forever. I remember when I told you, when I put myself in therapy back in, you know, in my twenties. Yes. Uh, I can remember when I knew that it was time for me to let go of my therapist because you, you will on the, you will have to face things like that without the assistance assistance of anyone I knew when it was time for me to go and that I was ready to go and I needed to go but then I noticed that my therapist was attempting to hold on attempting to hold on and, and kept telling me I, maybe you're not ready Michelle maybe you're not ready so you have to be very very cautious of that and be mindful of that as well if we were in peace right now, a lot of people in that hierarchy, pyramid, that hierarchy, whatever they're calling themselves, would be collapsed. And they would be, I mean, there's no, there's no income in peace. No legitimate income, I should say, in peace. You know, war generates income, generates wealth for a lot of people. So when you start, and so that's why it's not going to be a spontaneous healing per se, or it's not going to be a spontaneous um, event where all of us have healed the 10 billion of us, you know, almost 10 billion of us. That's, um, that's unrealistic, actually. What will happen is it will be, you know, several pockets of people that will be healed together, you know, or Simon Tate, you know, they're going to not, it's just going to happen on a, over a gradual um, period of time. And before you know it, you're around like-minded people that have healed, healed. So what's going to, what it's going to look like though, to people that benefit off of your pain and your trauma is people are going to start acting funny. People are going to start moving funny around you. People are going to get quiet when you come around. People are going to be telling people, okay, that girl is crazy or that man is crazy. I want to listen. You know, you're going to get that kind of stuff happening in the background. Okay. When I realized that I was healed and it, you know, and it, it, it happened quickly for me, actually. Um, it's just, it's just a matter of being properly grounded and thinking properly. Um, I noticed certain people were acting funny and I'm going to say it, my relatives, okay, uh, some of my relatives, I should say, some of my friends that I thought were friends and you know, it, it's just going to come with the territory. Now, everybody has since, you know, they've grounded themselves and realized, you know, I'm not changing back. In other words, I'm not going to be behaving the way I was prior to being healed because I was out of my toxic environment and I had no excuses to be con to continuing, continuing to happen. I mean, to react and behave a certain way. So the point is people are going to have to accept you as they, as you are healed, or you're going to have to decide to let them go because they can easily trigger you to get back into that patterns and behaviors that you fought so hard to get out of. A lot of people are, that, I mean, that, that energy of jealousy and envy 
is so toxic and so easily hidden, you may not know where it's coming from because it because of how how and how how toxic it is and how um ingrained it is in in someone's personality unfortunately and some of the people that you thought loved you may not have loved you at all because they may not even know what love is and that can be painful right that can be extremely painful so when you when you're healed it doesn't mean you're not going to have disappointments you're not going to have sadness you're going to have you know, you're going to have a different level of those type of experiences, of those type of life experiences. And you can easily ground yourself and, and get yourself out of it. That's my point, too, once you're healed. Because you, you know that path. You've been there before. And, I'm not, and you don't want to go back there. But you're going to meet people that are going to keep trying to drag you back, going to keep trying to pull you back. And that's where your, your strength comes in. You know, your perseverance, your persistence to keep moving forward. A lot of people like messiness. They like to be arguing all the time. They like to be debating. They like to be participating in, in bullying behavior. They like to be participating in behavior where they are harming other people. Some people just really enjoy that type of behavior. I don't want any part of it. And I'm not even concerned about it ever be becoming a factor in my life okay uh, I'm not 20 anymore I'm not 30 anymore you know I am I am a, a fully functioning constantly developing human being at the end of the day so when you are healed it's gonna create a different reality from that may be uncomfortable to for you you may be alone sometimes a lot of times until you can just match yourself up with like-minded people. So that's why I say get comfortable with your aloneness. I enjoy it because I have so much to do. And it gives me that opportunity to get things done. To get things moving. In other words, to do something. You know, to make the impact that I hope to achieve. And that I will achieve. So being healed is, you know, it's just the beginning. That's my point. Is staying healed and not allowing anybody to trigger you. And sometimes the people that do trigger you are maybe your partner, and maybe your husband, maybe your wife, your significant other. And that's where you need to make a decision. Is this going to continue? Are they going to come out of that behavior of, you know, triggering you because that benefits them? Those are the decisions you're going to have to make. And... It may not be easy for some people, especially when they've invested a lot of time. That's why a lot of people say, well, I can't leave a, 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 a abusive relationship because this or that. And they just make these excuses. And that means that they're just not ready. Some people are just not ready. So, again, coming from a, from a place of being healed is different. Let me just make that very clear. People may not... Um, want to associate with you because they can't trigger you anymore and so that means they want to go on to something else allow them to do so allow that type of behavior to go whether it's a family member family whether it's a friend and even if it's strangers okay i'm gonna go ahead and send peace and love all over stars and moon and mountains get to the place of being healed it's all worth it and trust me i'll be back